Hey guys, Tisha and Spike here. Today I'm going to do a video before it starts raining about my battery isolator. We get a sleepy Spike here. You sleepy? Look at that eye. Look at it, it's squinting. It's so sleepy. Oh, you partying too much. <clears throat> So, my van, right, right there, is where the battery isolator is. This is my main battery for my engine, and oddly, they actually mounted it right here. So this is where the latch is. Um, sorry, it won't focus. Anyways, I'll, it's a, um, ugh, I have the paper on the inside, but, uh, yeah, so this is how they mounted it. It's, like, grounded also to this little bolt that goes to this, whatever you call them, I forget, but, so it's grounded, it's got a 10 amp fuse right here, this is, like, a little casing cover thing. And this is the solenoid kind, which is way better. Um, every once in a while, I don't know if you'll get to hear it in this video, but maybe every couple minutes it does like a click click or something type of sound, which is pretty normal. Um, so they wired it down here. It goes right here. This casing right, right here. Okay, goes across, over. Down there, which is gonna be hard to see. So, sorry. Then it goes down underneath. <clears throat> the frame. Where, where, where is it? Oh, you see the zip tie? It comes up underneath. Comes up underneath there comes through the floor, so this is the passenger side. Um, I hardly ever get passengers, so um, it comes up through here. They glued it. I usually have the rug over it. And then underneath here, underneath the passenger side, is where I have my AGM battery, which takes up mm, maybe three quarters underneath this seat. And some of this stuff I'm going to mount on the wall eventually, but so far it's worked fine to have it under here. So right now it's been really cloudy, so um, the, um, and it's kind of hard to see, but usually I never have to check this stuff out. So anyways, um, the camera's not picking it up, but right now the battery is at half, about, maybe a little more, a little less, and this is a Pro Star 30 solar charge controller <clears throat> for my solar setup. And um, it's kind of been overcast yesterday, a little bit cloudy, a little bit of sun, not much. And so right now it's in yellow, and I'll probably get drive maybe 10, 15 minutes, and all of a sudden I'll probably end up back in the green and be fine. Um, since I've had the battery isolator, I've not had to really turn this off or my inverter. Um, I just have an 1100 amp inverter. Um, oh. Um, yeah, I don't know if you just heard that. It does like a. basically the sound that battery isolator makes. So I'm going to show you how. If. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this will. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so, it's kind of really hard to see. Oh, and the battery isolator is called the Battery Separator, the Smart Solenoid. It's by Shore Power. It is, um, 
I think the model 1314 they installed on my van. Um, I had a RV place do it. It came to $555. Um, took two and a half hours to install. They had the part ready for me when I got there. And, um, yeah, I just went with having someone else install it. It's just kind of easier because it's what they do. And if they fuck up anything, you know, you could take it back and have them fix it. But anyways, it's been two and a half weeks since I've had it. I've not had any problems. I've loved it. It's totally worth it to get a battery isolator. Um, that way I can just have the one AGM battery, the one solar panel that's maybe a hundred watt, maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure. I forget. Um, yeah. And then the 1100 watt, um, inverter with the charge controller and I'm set and so that really helps just to have the one AGM battery um, because I do drive around a lot for work you know but it's like 10 minutes here then I sit for maybe a couple hours maybe another 10 or 15 minutes but every time you're driving you're charging up that AGM battery so this is a little diagram that came with that um, battery isolator so it's probably hard for you to read but the way this diagram looks is this is a main battery this is your auxiliary battery. Right here, it says blue, brown, black wires, auxiliary start indicator light, there's a 10 amp fuse, and this says for automatic operation, connect to start position of ignition switch, see step eight, auxiliary start activation, optional connections. For manual operation, connected as shown here, momentary boost switch, mount on dash, which they didn't mount any on or off buttons for me. It's maintenance free, they said, so that was really awesome. Um, and then down to the auxiliary loads. So, I've really... Here, I'm going to go around to the other side. Hold on. This time I'm just going to hold the camera. Stop it. So, um, if you guys are able to get a battery isolator, I totally, totally recommend them. Um, I wish I'd gotten it a long time ago, but it's been really nice to not have to turn on and off my charge controller and my inverter. Um, before, I used to have to turn that stuff off at night, even when I lived in the bus, or... Um, I have to totally watch my power consumption now. It's like I don't have to, but I'm not dry boon docked anywhere for like a week or something um, to know. Like I live off grid, basically. Totally self-sufficient van. Um, I've not like gone camping with trees and, you know, off, off, off grid, you know, to... Uh, on really cloudy overcast days and not do any driving during that time to know exactly but I've noticed like being in the city um, and we've had we had maybe four days of four maybe yeah about four days of really good sunshine and I'm sure that really helped to charge up my um, AGM battery I just have the one AGM battery I always forget how many amp hours and all that is one of these days I'll do a video on that and what battery I have and how many hours and all that um so yeah <laughs> um but it's oh uh, if you can get a battery isolator and get I would definitely suggest a solenoid kind the kind I have that they had installed is um maintenance spray I don't have to do anything I don't have to turn on buttons it's like done you know, it should last a few years or something like that, they said, or a really, really long time. Um, but I loved it because I can run my mini fridge that's got a freezer with it. My dorm size 3.1 cubic, you know, fridge with a freezer. And I can run my phone. So everything I could have plugged in like 24-7. 
you know, and it's been really nice to just have like unlimited power, like truly, you know, and we've had were, so I just got the battery isolated later, maybe about two, two and a half, about, I don't want to say two and a half, feels like almost three weeks now. Um, and I, in the beginning, turned on and off my charge controller and inverter, but then I noticed I don't think I have to. I think because I'm driving like in little spurts throughout the day on and off, it does fine to charge up my AGM battery. So uh, maybe also because the type of engine that I have and uh, I have a 2001 Dodge Ram Van 2500 V8. It is fuel injected, 5.2 liter. So maybe that engine has something to kind of do with it. Um, my amp hours on the alternator is 117 amps. So um, you do supposedly need to know your amperage on your alternator before installing a battery isolator because you want to be around that. So it could be a little bit lower, a little bit past that. It's usually okay. Um, I think it's a lot easier just to have someone who knows what they're doing install it. Um, yeah, it cost me $555 out the door. And that was with the battery isolator, which was uh, 130 I think. The parts, labor is what costed the most. And it took them two and a half hours to do it. Um, which isn't too bad, you know. They do charge more, more her labor than my normal mechanic but my normal mechanic doesn't do those things all the time or hardly ever so he's like I don't want to fuck things up so I was like all right so I took it to Leal's L-E-A-L-E-S in San Jose California um they were great it was my first time going there they do a lot of RV stuff so I'll probably take the van back in a few months to have them install a fantastic fan for me um I don't have one of those yet. It's still like, do I need one? I mean, there's times I do. I really probably do, you know. I just don't want to cut into the ceiling and, you know, have problems. But I'm sure it'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, I definitely will go back there for the Fantastic Found to get done. Um, as far as anything else goes, I don't really think I need to take the van in for any other type of stuff that would pertain to RV-type living, you know. Um... <clears throat> But getting a battery isolator, especially if you drive around regularly, even in short bursts here and there just to run errands, it really helps just to have the weight of just one AGM battery. Like everybody else I know has so many batteries, all these wires, like it's not really needed, you guys. Like you can survive, you know, I don't know how much stuff you guys are all running, but I just have basic stuff. Like true, I don't run any electrical appliances. Uh, my kitchen set's like on propane, you know. Um, in fact, it's even really cheap because it runs even less on propane. It's like those little small tanks, you know, for my jet boil. So, um, and then, you know, if I'm at a friend's or something, I'll throw something in the microwave or at a client's house, sure, I'll throw something in the microwave, so no big deal. But, um, yeah, you guys only, you know, to make your load lighter, you know, you just need one AGM battery, really. You can survive fine on, um... You know, I don't know how much you guys' power consumption is, but for me, running a mini fridge, a phone, a tablet, my camera battery once in a while, um, maybe one other little small thing to charge up. Oh, my vacuum, and like, that's it, pretty much, I think. I don't have those things all charged in all the time. I do have the fridge freezer running all the time. Um, it's just easier. I try to have that at a lower temperature, so it doesn't have to run as often so I try to have it as low as possible um especially this time of year because it is colder the outside temperature isn't affecting the fridge temperature as much so probably when it heats up like when it gets really hot in the summertime I'll have to put the fridge freezer on a higher temperature um which will mean it'll take more energy to keep it cooler but at the same time we'll have more sun so the solar panel will help bring in more power to um yeah and I know I know it's really bad to have all those wires squished under there basically under the passenger seat but for right now that's kind of where it's been it's pretty much been out of the way I don't really get any passengers that's the passenger seat is really like Spike's domain you know that's pretty much where he sits 
you know, and I have stuff on the floor, like a small trash can, so he doesn't even interfere with any of those wires. It's not like in my day-to-day -day way. Um, depending on your seats in your van too, um, putting a battery, like a deep cycle battery under a seat is actually a really good idea. Um, uh, the reason I put it under my passenger seat is because of the weight distribution. Um, I can't, I'm about 115 pounds and then the battery is like 50, but then the weight of, um, I don't know, maybe that battery is like 60 pounds. I don't know. It's freaking heavy. Um, I can move it myself, but it's heavy. Um, and then I have the mini fridge on the passenger side as well. And then the toilet, which is also on the passenger side. So the weight there, and then on the driver's side, my weight, the water tanks, um, dishes, and a couple other things. So for the most part, my weight in the van is pretty even. Okay, um, I'm probably going to stop this video now because now I think I'm just kind of rambling and I'm probably giving you guys way more information than you really need. But yes, battery isolator is definitely worth it. Um, if you live in my neck of the woods, then going to Leal's, L-E-A-L apostrophe, yeah, sir, yeah. Um, and San Jose is actually a really good place to go for any of your RV type needs, you know, so, and they're really helpful and yeah, it kind of costs, but you know, we live this life free in a sense. So, you know, that's almost like making a utility payment or a rent payment for the month. Like most people would have, but instead I just paid it to that, but definitely, definitely worth it, you know? Okay. Bye guys. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.